Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I hope to, uh, well, at least move our missions along a bit. There's a lot to do. We've got Ribden Kerman on his way to Drez. We've got Elliot Kerman hanging around Ike in preparation to transfer back. We've got uh, Erden Kerman on, on uh, the standard lander around Gilly, and he needs to be transferred back. And we've got a Tylo lander on its way to Tylo. So some of that has to happen. I mean, it just depends on what order we need to do it. I think first thing we need to do is make sure that Ribden Kerman is really uh, getting close to Drez because we've got him, well, we've got him at uh, 11,000 kilometers right now. But he could do with a uh, mid-course plane change. Maybe at the ascending node we could uh, do some adjustments. But first I want to get... Uh, him safely into interplanetary space before moving along with every, anything else. We've also got a contract to do an ELU station. We need to build an ELU station and that's a particular challenge. We'll need a nice big launch for that but I'll have to get the timing on that. So lots of stuff happening for version 1.0 and it is possible that I continue this series but for version 1.0, I think uh, I always start a new series with each version, and I think the new series I'm gonna start with is gonna be a sandbox series. So it might make sense to just continue this series, though, uh, as a career series. Though, um, you know, I've 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 got a lot of diff conflicting thoughts about that particular thing. Okay, so anyway, let me quickly plot. A closer encounter with Drez and see what I can do. Okay, I've got a burn to get it to 1,800 kilometers, which is an almost an order of magnitude better. It's gonna cost 31.4 meters per second. I'd feel a lot better approaching Drez at this point, and it's mostly an inclination change. Not not really completely solving the inclination, mind you. Again, we're hitting Trez at the descending node, so we shouldn't need to correct all the inclination. And in fact, the whole point was to avoid doing that. Uh, anyway, let's get out to this point. Hopefully, we've got an electric charge issue. Uh, this doesn't really help very much, but we do have the solar panels on the lander at all that will supply electric charge, so it should be fine. Certainly, Delta V is no big problem. We've got the two nukes going and probably got more Delta V than we really need. Let's see how this did. Uh, not where I wanted. Oh, now that's better. Okay, looks like uh, we've got uh, 1,100 1, kilometers, which is tough to improve upon right here. Okay, so uh, once again, Ribden Kerman is on his way. Uh, let's get him oriented better with respect to the sun. All right, but it's gonna be a while till he gets in. He's got 193 days left. And what it looks like is happening is that we're probably gonna approach Duna transfer point first. So maybe it's time finally to bring Elliot back. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are and let's see how things line up. I'm just gonna follow things out until we get Duna to the proper location for transfer back to Kerbin. Yeah, I mean obviously we're not gonna do a mid-course plane change on our Tylo probe for a while, that'll be around here or something. And yeah, we're we're approaching very quickly. Eve has to go all the way around. Okay, I think that's about seventy five degrees. Might be eighty. But I think this is close enough. Let's head off. Let's head over to Shinkyushu Station, where Elliot has been waiting for quite a while. Okay, here we go. Now the lander has parachutes, so that is okay. We just need to refuel it, I think. We don't have too much spare fuel on the station, do we? Not really. We'll have to come back and refuel it some other way. Elliot is still in the lander can. Well, he's ready to go, let's say. I'm sure he spent some time in the rest of the station. There are nice ladder rungs all over the place. So, yep. But it is time to bring him back, finally. Okay, so transfer fuel into the lander. 
I don't know if it really needs a full tank of fuel to get back. I doubt it. But, uh, well, it probably won't be too heavy for the parachutes. And if it turns out to be very heavy, we will just uh, make sure to use the engine to slow it down. Uh, I think we can transfer some of the mod propellant out. Okay, fair exchange. We've got very small solar panels on the lander, so I'm going to have to make sure to remember to keep the thing angled properly. But, yeah, it's time to undock. We want the other craft, and we want to back away. Okay, so first thing we need to do is get into Do Not Orbit, because we're currently in Ike Orbit. Okay, looks like we're not going to fry the station with this. We might as well get in reasonably close to Duna. Hopefully this gravity will help us on our way. Okay, we are now in Duna orbit. Let's see if we can burn from periapsis out to Kerbin. That would be the ideal situation. Oh, we've got a possible thing going there. It's going to take a long time. But yeah, we, it's, uh, we I guess we could bring him back sooner than that. I, I suppose we should try. He's been waiting for so long. It's a little bit extra delta V, I know, but... Yeah, that's a huge improvement. Uh, 56 days versus however long that was gonna be, probably more than 100. So... Yeah, we'll get him back quicker. Okay, 27,000. That's ideal. That'll get us That'll get us all nice and neat. Into orbit in there. Well, not, maybe not into orbit. Maybe all the way down to the ground. But at least into orbit. Okay, so we should do this burn in three hours. And then Elliot will be on his way back home. I'm sure this thing has the 541 meters per second necessary. Probably the only risk is having too much fuel and being a little bit overweight. Okay, here we go, both Duna and Ike visible, and I believe Elliot is now going to be on his way back to Kerbin. So, Elliot managed to plant his flag on Ike, pretty close to Bill's, and Jeb is the guy who conquered Duna. Though he hasn't gotten credit for it in .90, he did that in .25. Okay, that's a crash. Let us get a little bit better. Let, let's get to the point where even if we didn't pay attention, assuming that physics wasn't limited to two point whatever kilometers, it would just skirt in and bring him down nice and safe. Well, unfortunately, just turning around seems to change the periapsis number by lots. So I probably should just quit here and let it be with uh, let's say 93 kilometers because just turning around is gonna change that by huge numbers okay so how it goes let's see where is the sun should be up there maybe yep okay let's Turn so that the panels are facing the sun. Because they're angled like this. Okay. So Elliot is on his way out. He will reach Kerbin in 56 days. Let's go back to the map view, uh, the, the tracking station to see exactly what day we'll be expecting to have to deal with his return. Okay, so Shin Kyushu Lander, it's called now and it is going to count let's say 55 days and so day 268 I'm gonna write that down because that's bound to be a thing that I'm gonna forget I've actually noted when everything else is gonna happen so our Dres lander I'm expecting on uh, year 9 day 19 remember we're using earth calendar uh, 365 days and uh, and 24 hours and that's because I just 
find it a lot easier to remember how to calculate things if it's like that. And I don't want to mess up on stuff like that. So best to remember the calendar system I've known for all my life. So anyway, uh, Tylo Probe is going to come in year 9, day 85. And then Erden Kerman, who is in this lander here, is going to have to return on year 8, day 311. But the first thing is, uh, Elu is coming up here. And our transfer to Elo, Elu, Elo, Elu, um, will probably take place pretty soon. Let's time warp to that. Okay, I think it's like a, well, that, that looks pretty tight, actually. I think I overdid it. I think I made it more like 90 degrees. I think it's supposed to be 100 something. But the problem is, Elu is, has this weird orbit. And I can't quite. It looks like. Oh no, from this angle. <laughs> looking at it from this angle, it looks like uh, about 100. Okay, anyway, uh, we need to build an Elu station, so let me get on with that. I just decided to check the contract screen, and we've got some interesting stuff around here. We've got perform visual surveys of Elu. Now, I wasn't planning on sending a Kerbal over there with the station. And actually, you know what? This involves taking a surface sample, crew reports. This might have to be a separate mission. We'll have to do this on a separate go around, I think. This is way more complicated. Uh, lots of lots of uh, funds, lots of science. But we really can't use the science right now anyway until we get like six million funds altogether in order to unlock the next tier in the tech uh, building, the research center. So maybe we'll hold off on that. Gravimetric scans of Gilly. I don't think we're suited for that right now. Yeah. Okay, but the one that really caught my eye was build new orbital station around Moho, and we've been doing plenty of station building here. So, yeah, why don't we pick up this contract? Uh, we've got a 13-year duration, and Moho encounters happen very frequently. So I'm sure we'll be able to get to that. Okay, so I've based the uh, Elu station on the Jewel station because they wanted enough room for... Okay, that's the Moho one. Uh, they wanted enough room for 14 Kerbals, and I figure we've got one that can support 20 Kerbals, so why not? Uh, it's a little bit more expensive this way, but uh, redesigning, I mean, it's a pretty good looking design altogether. And it uh, has the benefit of having its own nuke stage already attached. Uh, expensive again, uh, it's about 110,000 funds, but they've given us quite a lot of of advance on that and we'll need the Delta V that the nuke stage provides and uh, yep I've just uh, modified a little bit by placing the larger solar panels on the side here removing two of the docking ports we used to have uh, four of the senior docking ports now we just have two but other than that it's pretty straightforward lighting is still present and uh, I trust that this thing has enough Delta V to transfer to Elu I think it has like 7,000 so yeah now I've put it on the Taurus B because well first of all uh, we don't we won't have the same decoupling problem I don't think I hope not this will be a very expensive thing to have a problem like that with but uh, yeah this is a clean decoupling there aren't any parts in the way that could snag it so hopefully that's gonna be the case and otherwise the one problem with the Taurus B is that it doesn't actually have enough Delta V to lift this all the way to orbit so uh, the problem is the Taurus B, I don't know if we're going to be able to recover it this time. But it's sort of the natural launcher to use for this. It has the right form factor, obviously. And it uh, has it has about 4,100 Delta V uh, when we've got it here. So I think the nukes can handle the other 400 or so uh, to get into orbit. And uh, it's just a matter of the fact that we can't really bring this back down. I could take off the reusability things but maybe there's a slight chance that on a suborbital trajectory we'll be able to get it down uh, but I don't know if we, we're probably not gonna be able to reserve any fuel in order to do that we'll see I'll keep it on stage only to see how much fuel we have and judge from that maybe we'll uh, cut it short if I think I can get the rest of this into orbit 
without it and then reserve some fuel like that but we'll have to take it as it comes all right so uh, well this is a very expensive launch it's more than 10 percent of our available funds but uh, the rewards are very promising as well uh, no Kerbals on board uh, but other things will all be fulfilled we've got a new state uh, yeah yeah that's the one new station that has power antenna and docking port it's very stable right now but it's not around elu let's go okay stability on launch pad all right sas on throttle up let's see our yep resources are okay all right this is a huge one let's go Now, I used the uh, most pessimistic uh, estimate for the ISP for the stage, so maybe it's got enough to get to orbit. We'll, we'll see. So there is a tiny little possibility there, but right now we're losing fuel like crazy, so don't hold your breath. We've got more of a solid joint there, so hopefully there won't be too much wiggles. This would have been a much more efficient launch if I could have uh, done some action grouping on the engines. Of course, still haven't un unlocked the action groups yet. Because at a certain point we could have shut down the center engine, which isn't as efficient until we get into higher altitude. And then of course I could shut down the mainsails at high altitude using just the center engine for the rest. But right now I can't go around shutting down the main sails one by one, obviously. I'm gonna save the rest of that fuel. It's not much fuel. But let's uh, stage and have the nuclear stage proceed. Oh no! It still has the problem! Oh crud. So it is. It's. It wasn't something to do with those engines. It's just something with this decoupler. Ah, uh, we just lost a lot of funds. If that's gonna be the case, uh, hold on. Let's try and get this all into orbit first. Let's see how far away are we from orbit? Let's, uh, we, we should coast to Apoapsis, obviously. Well, no bringing the Taurus B back. Oh, the time warping might kill things. Well, not yet. Maybe I should just let coast to Apoapsis without time warping. Well, I don't think the... The station can pull itself free. Oh, wait. Okay, well, <laughs> that was not helpful. Well, I can't control this part now. That's bad. Well, so this is a serious decoupler bug. There aren't any struts running from the decoupler to the payload, by the way. There are struts from this to the decoupler, and somebody mentioned maybe the struts are the problem. Well, we've got some roll authority at least. Maybe we can roll off of it. How much torque do we need to spin off of this thing? Well, we're totally in the wrong direction. We're making an inclination burn instead of anything else, though with that huge load, the inclination burn isn't actually doing anything. Wish these nuclear engines would sort of heat up that decoupler and blow it away, but that isn't happening. Okay, well, what can we do? Let's see, well, we're gonna lose this anyway. Let's see what time warping is gonna do. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
Oh, so close. Ah, uh, crud. Anyway, on the bright side, everything was on a suborbital trajectory. So the debris will come back down. Downside, we just lost 300,000 credits trying to make this launch. All right, well, uh, we still have a contract to fulfill. Back to the drawing board. Certainly not with the Taurus B. Oh, heck, I guess we can watch the demise of our, our station. Hopefully there aren't any unwitting citizens of Kerbin below its path. Well, shame we don't put parachutes on the stations. There's still some parts that are still good. Yes. Recover vessel. Okay, with that failure, let me come up with something completely different. Okay, well, I've just... I haven't done something completely different, but I've, I've come up with something that's a lot cheaper, at least. And I've dumped the, the hitchhiker storage container from the top save that because we don't need 20 kerbals worth of room we just need 14 and here we've got 16. Uh, I dumped two of the nukes uh, again to save cost and uh, just shifted things around a little bit made it a little bit tighter. The downside is that we have no struts uh, to connect the payload to the rest of the rocket obviously and uh, this joint looks a little bit iffy. Uh, good news is that this particular decoupler does not have any struts running anywhere near it so hopefully it'll be alright this time I'm not sure that's something we're gonna test we're gonna test that if it turns out that this decoupler still doesn't want to decouple uh, despite there being no struts involved with it then the next thing to do will be simply to use a 2.5 meter decoupler I guess uh, even though that will be even more unstable looking. So that's the situation. We're gonna risk the money on this sort of test. Otherwise, uh, I had to use SRBs and we're gonna make it completely disposable. So there's a cheap way of going about it. And uh, yep, yeah, so uh, eight SRBs separate. We're going to start the main engine off, but we're gonna throttle back on it for most of the flight. Um, uh, we need to drain this container before the SRBs set, otherwise the rocket will be too heavy for the engine. Otherwise it should run alright, and our Delta V should be fine. Okay, so that is the situation, and we'll once again try and get our ELU station to orbit. Cross your fingers. Alright, well, at least it's standing steady on the launch pad. SAS on, throttle up. The only question is, I've dumped so much fuel out of the station, I hope it's got enough fuel to actually get there. I haven't actually done that calculation, but I, I think I don't even know exactly how much an ELU transfer is going to cost, so it's a little bit tricky. I mean, I, can, I have an estimate for you, but I don't know exactly how it'll be, especially with so little thrust, we might have to go around Kerbin more than one time in order to do the transfer. Okay, anyway, that's that's a lot of stuff to think about, but let's get going. Here we go. As expected, we don't need the thrust from the main engine. I'm going to throttle down on that. But I want to see this tank. Yeah, it's draining fine. We need some thrust just to turn and stuff. Because the SRBs don't have gimbling at all. Okay, that'll be fine. Probably going a little bit fast here. How's the ISP? Well, we're creeping up. Okay, good. We'll have good ISP. S 
start a little bit of a tilt. Oh no, ah, okay, all right. Um, hmm, seems a little bit heavier than I thought it would be. Should still be fine. Uh-oh, overheating. No, no, let's keep running it at full, full tilt. I don't trust the overheating and, okay, now we're accelerating. Need to remember to shift, uh, of course I don't usually use those boosters, so need to remember to shift them down on the decoupler a bit. The decoupler has enough force, and it's just that they're not mounted properly on them. Well, the key thing is whether the 3.75 meter decoupler on top of this can separate properly. At least there aren't any wiggles, I was worried about the stability of it, but we seem to be okay there. Maybe we should just go with SRBs and then make this into a recoverable stage. What about that, huh? It's not very powerful, though. But it is trying to carry a 50 ton plus load to orbit. I mean, this looks like a fairly stout stage. Maybe turning this into something reusable might not be such a bad idea. trouble is getting the landing struts sufficiently wide on it. Well, we might as well burn it out. But, no, well, I guess we'll reserve fuel for the start of our transfer. Probably the best thing. Alright, so let me plot an ELU transfer and see how much it's gonna cost. Okay, well, I'll have to sell for 126,000 kilometers for now. We'll adjust further as we go along. But right now, I don't think I want to do any more work on that particular maneuver node because we're going to have to figure things out with this. Okay, here we go. Ooh, bit of a kickback there. Okay, set. Okay, sounds good. Alright, well, at least we got a good separation this time. So it is the struts. Any struts, even if it's not the struts attached to the payload. Last time we didn't have any struts attached to the payload. But even if it's struts not attached to the payload, um, you can't touch those decouplers with struts. So... Alright, well, the Taurus B will have to be redesigned based on that, but at least we know it now. This thing is probably going to have to go around Kerbin once before completing this burn. Okay, a five hour orbit. I don't want to be messing with the moon. We'll probably have to replot, we will have to replot this. So let me just get rid of it, and at periapsis I'll be replotting for ELU. Okay. Encounter even. Okay, well I'm not going to touch that. We will definitely aim for that encounter. Okay, still in the dark here. Let's get into daylight and then I'll extend the solar panels. It's got the solar panels in an X, not the most efficient way to go, but looks good. Sometimes that's important. This time we have to go out because we're going to end up on escape anyway. Alright, well I'll see you at the end of this burn. Okay, we're getting close to it. Let's see, maybe we've passed it even. No, we haven't passed it yet. Of course, uh, the actual burn has deviated from the intentions. But it looks like we're okay. We'll see how close we get. Let's cut this out, actually. Oh, no. Well, that's unexpected. We've got a Duna encounter that's complicating things. See? If I just uh, move it off to the side a bit. Okay, 
So bad news is we have to rely on uh, make course plane change rather than trying to fix it here. Uh, good news is that with 221 meters per second we will get to within a thousand kilometers of Elu. So that's a positive and I think I will take that. We should have plenty of Delta V. Um, we did most of the burden with these engines and we haven't finished half of our fuel. So as long as the capture in Elu orbit does not take too much more than this this transfer burn we should be okay all right so we've got we've got Elliot on the way back we've lost the Taurus B again and a huge station we've got this station which will fulfill the contract on its way to Elu and I think I'll call it here so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments and suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time